All right, as December draws to a close, we come ever closer to the end of 2020. And more distressingly, we come closer to the end of Flash. Damn you 2020 is nothing sacred anymore. This is literally the worst thing to happen this year. Adobe Flash Player, oh you lovable son of a bitch. You've been responsible for the loss of countless amounts of information because you weren't archived for years. But also, you brought us tons of memories and joy. Without Flash games, the world would be a much different place. Flash games were a way for people to get into game creation, and for the rest of us who lack the brain cells to make anything, it served as a gateway into a whole new world of games. Now let's check some of these out. Holy balls, why is it so loud? What do I like about Flash games? Well, like a lot of people who grew up in the 2000s, Flash games played a big part in our childhood. Like, for me specifically, I never really used Newgrounds, but Flash games were still a big part of my life. Particularly, I remember the Lego.com Flash games. These things were dope. I would spend hours playing these games. Junkbot was a really good puzzle game. The main objective was to place blocks and help Junkbot get to the end. And Lego Backlot? That's like a fever dream. I distinctly remember playing it, not knowing what to do, and then I saw a Bionicle, and I lost my mind, dude. I was like, oh! Man, that was a wild game. Remember Belleville? Neither do I. What I do remember is one of their Flash games. You had a dollhouse, and you could just customize it. Just go to town, make up your own scenarios. It was a good time. Now, man, you cannot forget about Bionicle. There were a ton of classic Flash games for all different years of Bionicle. A distinct game I never played as a kid was the Mata Nui Online game. This is a classic in the hearts of Bionicle fans, and I can totally understand why. It was the place to get more Bionicle lore, and it's a point-and-click adventure. Can't go wrong with that. Another big connection with Flash games is its effect on YouTube. You absolutely cannot forget about Flash games on YouTube. Happy Wheels. This game was massive. I'm sure all the people who used YouTube back in the 2010s remember it. It was the shit. Most every big YouTuber that still exists from back then played this game. Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and PewDiePie. This game was absolutely everywhere back then. You didn't even really have to be that into Happy Wheels to know all the weird inside jokes like hating on Justin Bieber. Coming back to it, a lot of what I like about this game is just nostalgia, but it still definitely holds a very special place in my heart. A lot of YouTube was influenced by weird games like these. Shoot, actually, thinking about it, a lot of things came from Flash games. I don't know if any of you know him, but Jonochrome actually got his start in video game development when he was only 11. Think about that, making your own game series at the age of 11. His game series was Riddle Schools, and it's another classic Flash game. Dude, when I was 11, I was too much of a dumb bitch to even beat Mario Sunshine. Another thing I remember was playing a ton of Flash fan games. And as a mainly Nintendo channel, I gotta talk about something related to them somehow. Okay, picture yourself like this. You're a kid in the 2010s and you played Sonic Adventure 2 and Mario Sunshine for like six grillion hours. You tend to want more content about Mario and Sonic, and Flash games are just the perfect avenue for that. You got a lot of variety, both good, bad, and some outliers. Your real, uh, outstanding games. Now, since I've been mainly a Nintendo channel, I think it's fitting to start out with a mainly Nintendo game. Cat Mario! This game sucks, and we're already off to a great start. No, seriously, this game's whack. Things that shouldn't kill you, kill you. You can't trust anything. What the fuck? Why is he a cat?! Mario 63. This is a remarkably good platformer. They basically compressed all of 3D Mario into a 2D platformer. Yeah, Mario 3D All-Stars my ass. Mario 63 is where it's at. We have some real series mainstays in this game, like the Triple Jump, Ground Pound, Dive, and the Spin Jump. Also Flood. Nice. You can really tell all of the love that the creator really had for this series. I can't emphasize how much this shows. What a fantastic Flash game. Ultimate Sonic. Oh, this shit is fire, dude. It's basically Sonic Advance done in Flash. Dude, if Sonic fans are one thing, it's crazy. I can't imagine the amount of work it must have taken to make this thing. Even the physics feel right. It's crazy. The quality in this game is insane. It's legit just a Sonic game on Flash. 
Hell, it's even better than some official Sonic games. The roster's fun. You got Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and Cream. And they feel just right. Everything controls well, the level design is solid, and it's really just a fantastic way to experience Sonic for free. Super Smash Flash. Okay, this is the king of Flash games. Fan Flash games strive to have the legacy of this beast. Dude, I cannot explain how good of a game this was. It even got a sequel that's currently still in development. Super Smash Flash is a melee-inspired platform fighter. Super Smash Flash 2 is the brawl-inspired sequel. Okay, so for the roster, we got... Uh... We got some weird and obscure additions. Blue? Blade? You know, as long as they got Mr. Incredible, I'm in. Fuck yeah. The sprite work can be a bit unique, to say the least. Some sprites seem to be original, and others are blatantly taken from other games. Hey though, it's a free Flash fan game, so what do you expect, you know? And actually, its sequel is leaps and bounds better than the original. Seriously, the production quality on Smash Flash 2 is legendary. Seriously, playing this at school or some fantastic memories? We even played this game well into high school. The gameplay is just spot on. The character art and sprites are significantly more refined. And all around, it just feels infinitely more polished. It has some real production quality. But it doesn't even have blade in blue! Seriously, between all of these Flash games, there's one common thread. Just that feeling of pure love and care that fans would put into these. These games were made as a labor of love by fans, for fans. Believe it or not, Flash games would also have a ripple effect on the rest of the games industry. Some of these games were so iconic that they would eventually be remade and remastered. Just take a look at Fancy Pants. Looking good, buddy. Oh, and how about Henry Stickman? Just came out in August, and it is a wonderful collection of Henry's adventures. It's just heartwarming to see that these games got the love that they deserved, and they're able to be ported and remade. Honestly, I'm glad we got to enjoy Flash games for as long as we could. It's an outdated format, but not all hope's lost. Several of the biggest places for Flash games have found ways in order to preserve their games, mainly through HTML5, whatever that is, and even JavaScript, which apparently is a better way to store and upload these games. Newgrounds, as well, has a legacy player so that these games can be enjoyed for generations. Oh, and get this, Blue Maxima's Flashpoint. This bad boy can get so many Flash games in it, it's honestly the best thing to come to preserve Flash. It's got an absolutely massive archive of Flash games. While we may be losing a dearly beloved piece of internet history today, it's not all doom and gloom. So in remembrance of Flash, a moment of silence. HTML5, let's go! Woo!